Hey everyone, uh, I'm Ryan here with Andre and we're going to talk about our latest Pixie release. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so um, it's been a while since we've done a release and we wanted to make a video because I think there's a few cool things in this one that, that I think us talking about will kind of be interesting to those of you that are following along with what we work on. So the high points we're going to talk about are going to be the improved SIMD in Pixie. That'll be the first one. Then we'll talk about some improvements we made to path filling, and then finally improvements we made to image compositing, blending, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, I think to help along, Andre has made some visual aids here, right? So um, I guess let's talk about SIMD first. Uh, okay. So uh, Pixie for a long time now has had SIMD uh, for at least Intel and AMD chips through SSE2. Um, and the nice thing about SSC2 is it's supported pretty much on every x64, AMD64, whatever you want to call it, CPU out there. So it's like kind of like you can you can basically take it for free and assume everybody has it, right? So that's kind of why we've used it forever. Yeah, it's pretty um, old too, right? That's why it made it into pretty much every chip that anyone would ever yeah. use. Yeah, I think at the time that 64-bit CPUs came out. SSC2 was like guaranteed in the spec for it. So you like literally if you support 64 bit, you can count on SSC2, which is great, but like Andre said, it's like it's old. It's it may, still makes a freaking huge difference, but there is better stuff out there, uh, which is what we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but then there's the other half of the world. So, you know, I personally and I know others have some of the new Apple hardware, which is ARM. And uh, I think Andre, you have a couple of those too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. And so um, even though M1 can run x64 code, the neat, like the, the SIMD instructions aren't necessarily one-to-one -one mapped. And so often you don't get very good SIMD performance from your SSC2 on ARM. Uh, and so, you know, we were just kind of like leaving all of ARM high and dry without Neon. And then even on Apple where like you kind of could have it, it wasn't that great. Um, so. The big thing in this update is that uh, we now have uh, SSC2 everywhere, plus a runtime checked upgrade to AVX2 on Intel and AMD CPUs. And then on M1 and other ARM chips, we have Neon SIMD natively. And so uh, this is really quite a huge performance upgrade, especially for the ARM people, but even for, even for like, I think it's like 90% of CPUs run AVX2, which I think is why the graph is so big on there. Um, so the catch with using AVX2, which is something we struggled with, uh, is let's say 90% of people will have AVX2, but not 100%. So you kind of have to choose, like, do you want to basically not support 10% of people or stick to SSC2? Now, you can do different build targets to kind of get around some of this, but like, it's a pain. I don't think anybody really wants to think about that. Um, so what we chose to do is basically ask the CPU at runtime, like, hey, do you support AVX2? And then we can use the AVX2 versions instead if we get a yes. Um, now, we had to rework a whole bunch of stuff internally in order to make this work. Um, and uh, Andre actually kind of figured out how we ended up doing that. Do you think you could briefly mention kind of what we ended up doing there? Yeah, sure. So what we do is we basically mark functions as having SIMD. And then what it does is it actually is a macro that looks around for functions that would satisfy the, the SIMD. And then it like substitutes the bodies in uh, mm -hmm. and puts the if, proper if statements. So like if you support AVX2, it'll jump to the proper body. If you don't support AVX2, it will still stay on SSC2. And then for M1, which uses Neon, right, it would just go to the Neon path instead. And we'll not even have SSC or VX paths inside. Yeah. yeah. And what's like really, really amazing about this is, so, you know, we're writing Pixie and there's, there's kind of, there's just, it's a big library. There's a lot of code, but, you know, you want to be able to read it. And if you have SIMD, a big blob of SSC2, and then your scalar code, which you can kind of read and understand, and then you start adding AVX2 and then a big neon blob. Like you, you basically have, like you take a function that's this big and then you add like this much SIMD on top of it for every function and you can't even read your own code. And so the, the big thing about this is not only did it enable us to use all these different things, but organize things in a, a way better way. Um, maybe it's hard to imagine what that is, but let's just say it was a, a big upgrade. 
Um, so performance implication of this, obviously, for ARM is huge, but even for Intel is big. Uh, for many things, a being able to use AVX2 simply makes it twice as fast. Um, and uh, I think I think that's enough on SIMD. So yeah. maybe we can move on to the next topic. Um, okay, path filling. So Andre, why don't you explain how we fill paths before this upgrade, and maybe what we did uh, in this in this uh, release? Yeah. So if you look at the P here, we're going to fill this path, which is this this, this P. Uh, we want the the internal fill black. But we actually, when we get the path, the path, we do not have the. Uh, the, the fill right we just we basically have a line stroke like this so we need to figure out pixels that are inside or the outside how we do it is we do it with scan lines so if i zoom in again and what we can do is i'll enable the scan line and we can see we, we scan the image we, we go down the image and we go oh we, we hit this here let's fill and we go go down the way we used to do that is actually do five scan lines so if you look closely here and zoom in what we did is we actually did five lines Per pixel row. Per, per pixel right. row. So we would scan them. It's like this line hits nothing. It continues, but then it hits here. This line hits nothing. This hit. The reason why you want five is because you want end to aliasing. You want like this pixel to be mostly uh, opaque, but just a little bit of fill. And this pixel be half filled. And like this pixel half filled and this pixel fully filled. So that's why we did the scan line approach. But yeah. sending these scan lines is, 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 is slower. Expensive, yeah. Um, so I think of your your 1,000 pixel high image. You've just sent 5,000 scan lines across it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in order to so. get the higher higher quality, right? Yeah. So, but we now we're going to use a trapezoid method, which is I think is really cool. So, mm -hmm. uh, so we will still be scan lining uh, as before, but then when we reach this, so in some places the trapezoid method does not work. So it's an optimization, yeah. right? If you hit a place where the scan lines basically where trapezoids don't make sense we still use the scan lines but if we hit this place where the trapezoids make sense which is a specific place which actually happens a lot but yeah. when we hit that we know that we can use the trapezoids and, and it's much faster so if you scan line in this trapezoid here uh the trapezoids actually this part here there's actually more of a square than a trapezoid but what it does is it hits this pixel here you can see mm -hmm. the pixel it only fills this trapezoid part and then everything that's inside we know that inside we actually do a much faster just the memory copy so memory copy this no scan lines involved and then here again we do a small trapezoid and then again like here in the scan line nothing happens till we hit the the other trapezoid at the other side of the edge over here so yeah. uh of the of the p sorry over here so we draw a little trapezoid here we do the full fill and then we draw a little trapezoid there so yeah. uh before we had to do five different scan lines at this time we only do four trapezoids and like a, you know a simple a memory copy right which is extremely yeah. fast so mm -hmm. this has improved our fill performance by a lot drastically drastically um and you know like this this i think shows it like generally speaking the trapezoid method will work if you're filling begins and ends um in chunks right as soon as things start to overlap or whatever it gets a little bit weird but the vast majority of paths are you know shapes that have like outer ed edges maybe they have some inner edges but they're not really intertwining with each other and so the trapezoid method really is we use it quite a lot uh for just general path filling i would say yeah, exactly. The only place where the trapezoid method is kind of weak and kind of becomes really hard is when you are on an edge, like like over here, right? Because because we don't have a full edge, it's kind of hard to you know blend and, and fill this part. So that so then we go to the scan line method instead. I mean, if you could zoom in just a couple more times, so that I, I think maybe it'll come on the video. So what we're trying to say there is like uh, the that edge is in the middle edge of a pixel i guess the, yeah. the lines are very faint in figma maybe you yeah, could draw yeah, that yeah, oh. yeah so so if you imagine this is a pixel right here right yep like this is a pixel we send the five the five lines through it and then we only care, we only want to fill this part of the pixel which is like less than 20 percent. it's like 10 yeah, percent yeah. of the pixel so you want it to be 10 percent black basically right yeah. and so with trapezoids we can't do that because it like adds it has basically corners inside the pixels yeah. So whenever there's one inside the pixels, we fall back to the scan line. And, and it's not so much that the trapezoid is impossible. It's more just that we are treating this, the trapezoids as a shortcut. Like we will always be able to fill anything with scan lines and it will always look good. But if we can identify a shortcut, we'll take it. 
right? That's mm -hmm. kind of the perspective we've taken on it. And the, the shortcuts that we identify and take will simply get better and better over time. But this one made an enormous difference. I mean, imagine how many rect or how many paths to fill are basically just circles or ellipses or rectangles or anything anything like that at all is just golden. Um, it's it's pretty unlikely that we have too many complicated paths where this doesn't work um, of larger things. So so yeah, that's path filling. And um, so if you're looking into path filling or whatever, you'll often hear people talk about using either trapezoids or super sampling or scan lines or whatever. Now you know the difference and that Pixie does both. Um, I think uh, the next thing we can talk about, unless you wanted to add more on path filling, is uh, image blending. Yep. So um, image blending or image compositing, you know, people call it different things, is basically if you have a background image, backdrop image, and you want to draw something over the top of it, um, and this is basically, there's kind of two categories of it. There's like, are you pixel aligned or are you not pixel aligned? It's not pixel aligned would be like, are you drawing like a rotated image or, um, you know, offsets of like 10.5 by 10.2 or something like that. But if you're pixel aligned, um, you know, this, this is a very, very, very fast operation. And we've made it even faster because we can use now that new uh, AVX2 and Neon uh, SIMD stuff. So, you know, either you're filling a path with Pixie or you're compositing images, and both of those two major uses of Pixie got drastically faster in this release. Yeah, and all thanks to the SIMD, especially the AVX and the Neon, which yeah, yeah. most computers have. Yeah, it, exactly. Uh, it, it's a bit of a bummer that AVX2 is held back by only being 90% out there when it's it's got more instructions so you can do more, and the instructions work on more data, so it's, it's just faster. Um, but you know, it turns out you just do a little bit of a little bit of uh, infrastructure setup, and then you can just use it without any concern. It's pretty cool. Yeah, um, exactly. If you are interested in some of this, the the other repo, which is a dependency of Pixie, uh, is on GitHub called just NimSimd, very vanilla, most vanilla name you could possibly imagine, and that will have both the macro we're talking about and the SIMD bindings that we use for both SSE2, AVX2, and Neon. So. Um, there are a couple of other bonus things in this update. Um, we also improved the speed of PNG loading. So our kind of goal with this update was performance and, and you know, we wanted to be faster at path filling and image compositing than Cairo, Cairo being a phenomenal library. And we've achieved that for the situations we were focused on, which is most situations, I would say. So that was really cool. And loading PNGs, well, STB image is a really phenomenal library, but hey, why not try to be faster, right? And, uh, and we accomplished that for PNG. And then the last thing that's also new in this Pixie release is that Pixie can now open animated GIFs or decode them or whatever you'd like to call it. Um, currently to do that, you have to import the, the GIF file from Pixie directly, which is in Pixie slash file format slash GIF. But once you do that, you can decode a GIF and you'll get back the frames and the frame timings and basically everything you need to do to do either GIF editing or GIF playback. Uh, which is really quite cool. There's not a lot of those out there. Yeah, and GIFs is such a fun format, and like it's it's everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think we'll probably have another video later where we kind of demo playing GIFs back on the GPU with with Boxy, but um, one one video at a time, right? Uh, so yeah, this is our new Pixie release. There's obviously more in there, but I think these are the highlights. Um, do you think we covered everything, Andre? What about the <laughs> removal of masks? Good point. All right, so... Um, yeah, this one is a hard one, because on one yeah. hand, we introduced masks originally to make things faster, right? Yes. But yes. as we were making images faster and faster with all the SIMD and Neon stuff, like we kind of accidentally made images faster than masks, right? And so well, <laughs> it was like kind of weird. It's like, why do we have these masks, which are kind of an optimization? That is slower, yeah. right? Yeah. We could make masks faster. I think, like, we course, definitely could. could. Yes. But it's like, we spend so much work making images faster. Like, doing the same thing for masks just, like, feels, like, not worth it. So we yeah. decided to, to basically drop masks. Well, you could still use images as masks. So all the functionality of course. is masks still there. Yeah. fully supported yeah, still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, the extra optimization of using the mask is just not there. Because, oh, well. <laughs> yeah. would, would you mind, Andre, doing, like, the world's quickest demo of what masking is, I guess? And then I... Because I, I know many people right. will know. All right, yeah, 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 masking. Okay, yeah, so in order to have a mask, 
right? So yep. if you have like uh, like a circle, right? And yep. you have another circle, like right, uh, let me make this one red. So if you make this circle a mask, like this, it will cut out that circle. So that circle is not cut out. And that's like yeah. the major use yeah. of the mask is just, is just cutting yeah. stuff out from things. So yeah. so yeah, this masking, you could still do with Figma. We'll just use normal images for it. In a way, it yeah. actually simplifies the APIs on how you think about it, because you don't have this extra yeah. like thing to, to worry about. Yeah. So the, the way it works, like technically, is that uh, every pixel in the mask has like a, a level of the color it lets through, right? From zero mm -hmm. to one, let's yep. say. And so um, what we did with mask and why they're an optimization is that we would have just one byte per pixel so the masks were four times smaller, right? Instead of having an RGB A and then only ever using the A, we would just only have the A's. Well, okay, mm -hmm. great. Masks are smaller. That should be faster, right? But uh, as Andre was saying, like, first off, when you make images faster, masks don't magically get faster too. You have to go and do that work as well. Um, they also make the API more complicated. And um, I, I think the, the point that I kind of realized, which I know I've mentioned to Andre, but I'll mention again because I think it is interesting, is this... You know, we're only two people, and we're trying to work on a lot of libraries. And so I think there's this important distinction between what I personally think of as like theoretical performance and like achievable performance. Yeah. So yes, masks by being smaller are theoretically strictly faster for masking, right? A mask being just that single channel yeah. image, right? The problem is achieving that performance is strictly additional work yeah. for like limited resources, right? And yeah, and it's not one. Especially where most of the mask stuff we're going to use through Boxy, which uses GPU masking, which is even faster yeah. than anything you can do in CPU. So it's like, why yeah. why are we optimizing CPU masks when we already can like dwarf them on the GPU through Boxy? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so yeah. So like, if you you can imagine, you, right now we have image compositing and image filling with paths, right? As soon as you add, and then all of those have SSE two, AVX two, and Neon, right? So it's like two things times th three SIMD paths. So like six concepts going on there, right? As soon as you add masks in, you have a second fill for paths path, which needs its own SIMD stack, right? And then for compositing, well, can you draw an image? Uh, you could, can you draw a mask on an image? Certainly that is masking. Can you draw an image on a mask? Yeah. Well, it's probably, yeah. 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 And then can Based you draw a mask on a mask? Right, so you go from one image image to four because it's image 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 mask mask uh, image mask mask. Uh, yeah. So you have like exploded your SIMD requirements and optimization requirements, all for the sake of an, an optimization that isn't even by far the most important one. So I think what we concluded is like, you know, and it was probably my fault. I think I was the one who like defended masks early. Is like, it's just not the right way to optimize, and so we chose to remove them. Everything can still be done. You just do it with a mask. And you will have higher performance for the most part now anyway because of the better SIMD. Yeah. And so exactly. nobody code. loses, everybody wins. Yeah. Like, it's OK. Yeah, code is actually is faster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we can handle it. Like, there's less of it. It's just less crazy. Mm -hmm. So because even that trapezoid method, that trapezoid method and optimization shortcut we talked about, we did that for images. Do we have to go do, like, yeah, again for masks because yeah, 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 they're true. slightly different yeah. like lots of lots of questions it, it it was not a good leverage point for performance and so we've chosen to get rid of it yeah. um but yeah that's that's a good point i'm glad i i'm glad you remembered that andre i almost forgot and i would have been upset <laughs> yeah uh okay well thanks for chatting with me about the update uh, yeah. i hope everybody enjoyed listening and uh thanks for those of you out there using pixie and if you're not consider giving it a try it's uh it's pretty good